Hello everyone, and thank you so much for buying Organic Is Not Yucky, an introduction to organic baking for the home baker. By me, Jean King. Thank you so much, also known as Cooking Me Jean. Today, right now, we are about to make something very wonderful. White cake. Something you can use, or something I would even keep in my freezer just in case company came over. So, this is a two-part recipe, and it's gonna go by kind of quickly when you make it, once you get your ingredients together. So we have our butter, our eggs, our organic all-purpose flour, organic vanilla, aluminum-free baking powder, cane sugar, Himalayan salt, and coconut milk. You can use white sugar if you want a whiter cake. All right, so we got our, our dry ingredients here, flour, baking powder, and salt. Three simple dry ingredients. Um, you can, the flavoring to this, if you want to change it from simple white cake to something else, that comes up in a moment. So we have our egg whites. We have our coconut milk. The egg yolks, please save that for another recipe. Uh, or scramble them or whatever, however you want to do that, but save those. You don't need them in this recipe. So our butter and our cane sugar, we're about to cream those together in a moment. You're going to end up with uh, three bowls, I believe, here. Let me make sure I got this right. You're going to, now let me tell you first of all, this is not an a expensive cake to make. The cane sugar I got, two pounds for a dollar at Dollar Tree. We have the egg whites for about 15 cents. Um, then we have, with the, the total recipe cost was five dollars and 62 cents. The can, you can use, uh, the coconut milk was a, I got it for $8.99 for six cans at Costco, so about a dollar fifty, but I use more than a can. Um, and the butter depends on if it was on sale for $2.99 or $3.99. Depends on the price. So we're gonna mix our dry ingredients together. We're gonna to cream our butter. Look how smooth that is. Oh, nice and smooth. Very nice and smooth. And we do use RBST free butter. That means no bovine in the butter. Bovine is where they inject the cows um, to keep them lactating all the time. So they're always producing milk and we don't have that. And we're using cane sugar. Again, if you want to use white sugar, you can. It's what you're used to. Maybe most people are because it's smoother, but with, uh, with white sugar, it's smoother, but with cane sugar, you get a little bit of a lump on that. To alleviate that, if you really want it smooth, 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 you add a little bit of sugar, you know, like a quarter cup. Wait five minutes, keep it mixing for five minutes. But then after that five minutes is over, you add another, you add the, until you're finished adding the sugar, and that will make a very smooth mix very smooth. Now look at that, it's kind of lightened up a little bit there. Is that because of my lighting? Scraping down the sides all the time. If you have a mixer where you can do that or um, you have a mixer that touches all sides, you don't have to scrape as much. So now we're going to add the vanilla very quickly. Just nothing much. Organic vanilla, I choose that because that was on sale and it was cheaper. For real vanilla, I always use real vanilla. I don't ever use artificial because I can taste artificial or you when I, it just smells bad. And it, it doesn't add anything to the mix. You might have to add like three times what you would add for real vanilla. So don't use artificial, please. Okay, so we're gonna do the alternating method. We're gonna alternate with the flour and the uh, egg white mixture. So what you're doing is you're gonna start with flour and end with flour. I'm letting the mixer, uh, the beaters, help me out here because you know if you turn it on too soon there would be a flour cloud so I'm letting it kind of drag through the batter so that the flour gets wet or moist there in the mixture so there we go and making sure I scrape down I don't have any uh, in the unincorporated mixture on the, on the, the spatula see now once I've done that I've mixed it so well that I don't have to do too much with the meat. The machine doesn't have to work as hard. You don't want to build the gluten up in the flour. You don't want your cake to be tough. And so now we're going to add some of the uh, egg whites. You're going to add half the egg whites. Like this is a five part alternation. And I just want to make sure I got those still smooth. So I whip them again so that in case the uh, whites in the kind of went to the bottom because it's milk and whites are mixed together. I didn't want them to. Uh, be on the bottom and uneven so I'm going to add half of the egg white mixture and it's going to start to look lovely very lovely
all in all, when you're making this cake, once you have everything measured out, it may take you 10 minutes to do this. This video's 12 minutes long. About that, about as, but once you have everything measured out and you watch this video, you'll probably be able to do this in time with me. It's that quick, it's that easy and simple and direct. Uh, look at that, just go until it gets a little smooth and you'll start to see that there. And it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because you don't want to over mix it. Oh, uh, that's good right there. Now, we're going to add the second third, or yeah, the second third of flour. We're building, we're doing chemistry right now. So if you never like chemistry and you're a baker, you really do like chemistry, you just never knew. Again, let the machine work for you. Let it drag through the batter and uh, help you incorporate the flour, the, you know, the dry with the moist. A few seconds there. Look at that, it's coming together. I don't know about you guys, but I get excited, excited when I see <laughs> my batter come together just the way I expect it to. I have had so many failures that I know what it should look like, and when it does what it should, it's just wonderful. Now this, this is the second half of the egg white mixture. It goes in completely, you don't, this is gonna look so good right now, you're gonna think you're finished, but you're not. And in the egg white mixture, I believe I did, no, I added the, you could, instead of, you could have put the vanilla in the egg white mixture also. You could have done that, or you, and at this point, instead of using vanilla, you could have used uh, lemon extract, orange extract, um, mint extract, whatever flavor you wanted this to be, you could have added it at this point. Um, if you're gonna use the extract, uh, a fruited extract, you wanna use maybe a quarter teaspoon. Vanilla itself, uh, just plain vanilla extract. You can use probably a tablespoon. Whatever the recipe calls for, follow that. But if it's gonna be a fruit extract, I always start with a quarter teaspoon. And then the next time I make it, or if I, I think I can add more, I'll add more to it. But I like to start with a quarter because it's really strong. So look at that there, it's kind of smoothing out. It looks like you made a mistake because it's really wet, but you haven't. Yeah, even, I, I just remember, you could probably add some coconut extract if I didn't say that already. And then, um, that you have your coconut flavor and you can put some coconut flakes on the outside with your, whatever kind of frosting you're gonna have. Oh, this would be great for that. I did that one time. And now, I decided to make this two different ways for you guys because I wanted you to see the difference in how cake comes out with different ovens and different pans. So right there, that is an eight by two inch pan. And I have my parchment paper because if you use parchment paper, you don't have to oil or grease anything. You get easy cleanup and you don't add any calories to the, the batter, to the cake. It's just nice and simple. And you guys will see that in a few moments. I do apologize that you can't get a full view because of the where my camera angle is, but you'll get to see it in a second. And now this is a nine by 13 pan. Um, again, I wanted you guys to see the difference on what it looks like with different pans and different ovens. You, it's gonna be, this is such a good batter too. Probably should have added some lemon to it. I just had that vanilla. And the parchment paper gets a little bit of cake batter on it, but don't worry about it. So this is what you end up with. You could have made, I could have made, three eight by uh, two inch pans, would have been thin layers, or I could have made, put it all in the one nine by 13, would have been a thicker layer. So the smaller pan I used my little oven in, my little uh, confection oven, I did not use confection on it. And then I used my regular stove. And uh, I'm used to using my regular stove, 
not my smaller oven to bake cakes in. It's been a long time. So this one came out a little too dark because I probably should have changed, shouldn't have had it on 350. I should have had it on 325. It was regular cooking, not confection. So the since it was close to the heating elements, it rolls up in the middle. And I mean, I cooked them at the same time. So I didn't put one in the refrigerator and wait for the other one. They, all, they both cooked at the same time. This should have been in 325. And because it's so close to the cooking element, the other uh, cake is an inch or two further from each cooking element. So that was a little close, actually more than two inches away. So I'm letting that cool out, cool off. Yes, that is hot out from the oven. I don't know what I was thinking, but yeah, it was hot. So you see how that just comes out of the pan? Just look at that. Just so nice and easy looking. Nothing sticking to the parchment. That is not wax paper, that is parchment paper. Nice and simple, nice and simple. So since it's uneven, I'm gonna cut off the top. And later I will add frosting to it. Um, just that way. That Remember when you're baking, not everything comes out exactly as you think it should sometimes, so you have to test. So I have the santuco there. We just don't, don't even need a serrated knife on this one because uh, it just comes off. And the, what you're, whatever you cut off the top is for the chef. See, isn't that beautiful? You get your own little snacks and stuff. Yes, I have ashy hands because I wash my hands a lot. When I'm cooking, I just, I don't like stuff on my hands. Even cake batter. <laughs> so you see, the, the large one, I'm used to that way that oven cooks. That came out just right, it just the way I wanted it to, what I expected it to do. It didn't rise in the middle. It was nice and level and even. A little lighter, not too much, but a little bit. Still get the same crumb on it though because we mix it's the same batter. That's what it looks like there. Oh, look at that. Now that could be a thicker cake if I had put all of the batter in a 9 by 13. So always figure out what you want to do with your cake in the end or before you get to the end. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy this cake and make it your own. Thank you.